Well, the reason that I joined the Air Force was honestly, I was just really bored with my civilian life. I had just graduated from college and I was eager to get into the next chapter of my life, but I didn't know where that would be. And I actually turned 27 while in boot camp. I just completed eight years time in service and I am a staff sergeant. My AFSC is 4 Alpha 0 X1, that is Health Services Management, and I'm currently on a special duty as a patient movement controller for TPMRCE. Actually, neither. I came into the Air Force as a TACP and actually was medically eliminated from the course and other battlefield airmen jobs. When that happens, sometimes they grant you the opportunity to reclass, so they have you fill out a dream sheet, and it just so happens that I was reclassed from that into the 4A career field. And actually, the majority of the male 4As ended up in the career field the same way that I did. Absolutely not. The last thing that I wanted to do was end up behind a desk in the military. But once I got to my first duty station, I was actually put into the readiness flight as a unit deployment manager. I had a great supervisor, my position in the unit was really great, and I got a real understanding for everything that we do to support the people downrange, and I was actually really good at my job. Well, like I mentioned earlier, I wanted to be TACP, and whenever they have you fill out that dream sheet for a reclass, uh, one of the jobs that I put down was a uh, combat photographer. I also was interested in public affairs. I just wanted to be as far forward to the battlefield as I could. I actually signed up for six years. Uh, that was a requirement to get the enlistment bonus that was offered in the TACP career field. But when I was reclassed, I actually lost that. But I'm glad that I did sign up for six years because it worked out for me in different ways. Tech school for the 4A career field is actually at Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio, Texas. It's actually pretty quick. All of the Air Force medical tech schools are actually located at Fort Sam Houston. And in comparison to them, you're in and out. And they actually call you a Pop-Tart because you get there and about 30 days later, most of the people take off. Now for me, I got there during the holidays. So I took part in what is called as Exodus. That's actually where you leave the squadron for the holidays, go home, and then come back. If you actually are there during that time, I recommend that you go ahead and take leave, go home, because if not, you're just going to be doing details till everyone comes back and classes start again. <laughs> no, absolutely not. I hated it. 27 year old man sleeping in a twin bed. I was over it pretty quick. The great thing is the facilities are all brand new. They're very, very nice. They're state of the art. For most people, they didn't probably didn't mind it that much, but I was just over it after boot camp. I actually got there with my phase two already completed. So that meant that I got to leave the squadron on the weekend. So come Friday after we release, I would leave. And I'm from Texas, so I had a lot of friends in San Antonio. So I just stayed with them until Sunday night when you're required to be back at the dorms. So that was the saving grace for me was being able to leave on the weekends. Actually, everywhere. You can get assigned to not only the Air Force bases, but all of the other U.S. military bases as well. You can actually get assigned to embassies and anywhere that has a medical detachment. Wanting to travel the world? Medical is the way to go. Now the 4A career field is actually very broad. So what I'm going to do first is talk about the traditional roles in the clinic. And then I'm actually going to discuss a little bit about what I do right now at my special duty. Now a 4A can find themselves anywhere in the clinic. That's why I describe them as the Walmart of the medical support staff. You can find a 4A over in CSS, the command support staff. You can actually find them over in referrals, systems, readiness, records, flight medicine, or the front desk. Now currently I am a PMC, that stands for Patient Movement Controller. I am part of a geographically separated unit or a GSU. The unit that I'm attached to here at Ramstein is TPMRCE. Now that stands for Transcom Patient Movement Requirement Center East. I know it's a lot of acronyms. We're actually tri-service, which means that we have Navy, Army, and Air Force personnel. Our home unit is Scott Air Force Base back in the States and that's TRANSCOM. Now TPMRCE has three areas of responsibility. 
That means that we cover all patient movement for UCOM, AFRICOM, and CENTCOM. So if a military member or DOD civilian becomes ill or injured in any of those areas, we actually are responsible for their patient movement, which covers about 80% of the global patient movement. So as a PMC, my primary job is to review all patient movement requests. So I ensure that all of the admin information in there is correct and is validated. Now TPMRCE works with multiple organizations to coordinate the aircraft that is used, the team that is deployed, and the areas or hospitals that these patients are going to be picked up at and delivered to. Now the traditional schedule for a 4A is just like a civilian clinic. That's Monday through Friday, 7 to 5. Now my current unit, we're on what is known as a Panama schedule, which is 24 hour operations, um, roughly a 12 to 13 hour shift. Now the great thing is you only work about 15 days out of the month, which means that you work two days, you're off three. Then you work three days and you're off two. Now, like I mentioned before, the 4A career field is actually very broad, but you can get special codes attached to your AFSC, which allow you to remain in a specific shop for the majority of your 4A career field. Now, these are known as SEI codes or Special Experience Identifiers. Two shops specifically that I have SEI codes in is Systems and Readiness. Now, in order to get these codes, you have to get additional certifications and training. For instance, in systems, since it is on a different network than the base, systems personnel have to get the same certifications that the base comm personnel have to. So if you really like computers and system and networking, that is one option that you can do. Now each of those actually transition into the civilian world wonderfully. And you can line yourself up with a job before you even get out. Now the deployment tempo for a 4A is just like the rest of the medical personnel, but deploying as a 4A is actually very, very rare. If you were to deploy as a 4A, you would be deployed as part of a PAD team or patient administration team. Those are usually located at the larger hospitals um, over in the AOR. Now traditionally, a 4A is actually going to deploy more often as a TCN escort. A TCN escort is actually a third country national, and those are personnel that are hired by the military um, in a different country to perform certain duties. And your job would be to supervise those, those personnel. At the very least, that would be your job. Now, a more common deployment for a 4A is for humanitarian purposes, such as uh, going to a certain location because of a natural disaster. But deploying as a 4A, that's actually pretty uncommon nowadays. Honestly, I'm not sure. I'm still really just playing it by ear. There's a lot of things that I want to do before I hang up my dog tags. And every year that I complete is closer to that 20 year mark. And those benefits start to look really tempting. So at this point in time, the jury's still out. I don't know. Now my ultimate goal is to commission. Now, originally, I wanted to commission into the Medical Services Corps, or MSC, which is actually our officer counterpart. Um, but that has a time in service cutoff that I already broke. So unfortunately, unless that changes, I'm still going to go with just going kind of open general on the officer side. Now, my advice for a person that wants this job coming into the Air Force is if you want this job or any job um, in the Air Force, pursue that. Don't allow yourself to be pressured by the recruiter or by anyone else. If you want a specific job, stick to your guns and go after that job. They may tell you, it's like, oh, but you can leave earlier or you're going to have to wait longer for this job. Do whatever it takes to make sure that you get that job. Now, you may be in a time crunch kind of like I was, and at that point, if you have to go in and get a job that you weren't passionate about or wanted in general, wait till you have your cross training window and go ahead and at that point apply for that job. But not all jobs allow you to cross train. So before you take any job, make sure that you have that possibility available to you. Now, my advice to you to be successful in the military is to be patient 
and to keep a positive attitude. That's going to be very important and it's going to go a long way in your military career. Now, all military jobs in the end are still just jobs. So that means that they're probably going to become monotonous at some point in time. Commit yourself to a process improvement. Give yourself a personal and a professional goal. And your motivation to succeed and achieve those things will find its way into the rest of your career and the rest of your life. Well, guys, I want to thank you for this opportunity to talk to you about a little bit about my career field and what I do on a daily basis. You guys can find me on multiple social media platforms, but the quickest and most efficient way to find me would be go to Facebook, look up Wild at Heart Association, and when you see the white star, you know you found the right spot. Uh, that'll connect you to Instagram, that'll connect you to YouTube, Twitter, all the other social media platforms that we're on. Thank you guys for this opportunity, and you guys have a great day.